187 at 5810 Murata Avenue. Homicide wants you over there. The coroner thinks the broad was whacked using the army morphine. Don't say anything, Roy. Just get over there. What's with that getup of yours, anyway? I should start introducing it as Detective Earl. This is my science teacher, Mr. Phelps. Your interest in my appearance is starting to get me worrying. Like it or not, we're a dysfunctional couple now. People judge me with you on my arm the same way they would a fat broad with a five o'clock shadow. I really hope you're joking, Roy. Whatever kind of look you were going for, you missed. Well, this day was a total waste of makeup. Parker or Green? Seem distracted. We recovered the morphine. Some of it might be unaccounted for. So what? That's life. We did our job. Closing one case opens another. Do you have any idea what is really going on while we're wasting our time following this stuff? Are you going to tell me? The deals being done right now will change the face of L.A. forever, and we're wasting our time on some hump. Someone's little girl. Visit the morgue at the end of the month when the John and Jane Doe's are cremated. Their percentages. The odds for and against lightning striking. Second floor, apartment six, in the back. Thanks. Bukowski, you made homicide. That I did. Good to see you, Phelps. You two want a hug? A 
can we get on with this? Relax, Rusty. 26 years old, fashion model. Found in the tub by the cleaning lady, Mrs. Reynoldson. She called it in. We heard Carruthers thinks... Carruthers likes to make work for people. Overdose of sleeping pills. Falls asleep in the tub. Rest in peace. Case closed. Hear, hear. Mal is 100% that it's murder. Do you mind if I take a look around? Sure. Go right ahead. Phelps? Mal, we've had a look around. Rusty thinks it's a waste of time. What's your theory? Come on, Mal. Tell us why we were dragged down here. If the victim was alive when she entered the tub, water would have entered her lungs. The water is violently churned in the windpipe as she drowns. The result is that a lot of foam is generated. This foam is found at the mouth and nostrils in almost all cases of real drowning. Notice anything about our Vic? May I took a look? Be my guest. Take a closer look at her head and neck. Her neck is bruised pretty badly. Bruising on the forearms, and these look like bite marks. Very good. Very unusual ring. I could be wrong, but it looks like a black sapphire. The eyes are a classic sign of morphine, and the bruises tell their own story. I think one man held her down and another held her arm and injected her. They put her in the bath to try to cover it as a drowning. And spread a trail of barbiturates. Take a look around outside on your way out and see if you can find the serrets. It would make my theory. And morphine would have been very quick, and there wouldn't have been much of a struggle. Okay, so find two guys who recently bought serrets and weren't junkies, and you might be onto something. This is her in these photos? She's something else. Yes, I, Miss Billy was. Pretty girl like that? Maybe she was having trouble with some boys, huh? Maybe she got her heart broken. Couldn't take it anymore. So she ran herself a bath and down some pills and then she just drifted off. Quality English smoking jacket. I don't know anyone under 45 who would wear one. So much fire. So much drive. I'm sorry, I cannot see this. There, there. Looks like barbiturates. Barbiturates. What else is rattling around in this thing? We should speak to a doctor. Scrubbing both drugs would make her life a roller coaster. What do you think? Once you've checked the bathroom, Cole, you better take a look around. This 
is all top end of town stuff. Gives us somewhere to look. It's place to start. Beautiful girl. Clothes certainly aren't from the Sears catalog. I'm Detective Phelps. I'm here to try and help Julia. Do you mind answering some questions? Virginia Reynoldson, I'm just so shocked. I feel like there's something I should be doing, someone I should call. We can make those calls, ma'am. Who needs to be notified? That's just it. I don't know. Miss Julie doesn't have any family in town. Someone has to set her affairs in order. Um, Mr. Henderson, maybe? I else is there? I, I don't know. If you give the details to the other detectives, ma'am, they can try and get in contact. Was Miss Randall depressed about something? Upset? No more than normal. What are you hiding here, Mrs. Reynoldson? Julie was obviously disturbed about something. I have no idea what you're talking about. She was taking barbiturates. She couldn't sleep. You must have seen them in her room. You've seen the pillbox, the things she hid in there. I don't know how she supported herself. Always new clothes and jewelry. She lived like a movie star. A princess. Does modeling really pay that well? Did Miss Randall have many friends visit? I'm not sure. I only come around twice a week. Why are you lying to me, Mrs. Reynoldson? Julia had men stay here. I will not speak ill of the dead. You can't prove that. the smoking jacket I wouldn't like to tell tales you understand but that's mr. Henderson's an older man very distinguished looking he seemed very much in love with her where would we find him I'm sorry I, I don't know he said he lives in San Francisco what was it like working for miss Randall perfectly fine officer Mrs. Reynoldson, it seems like there's something you want to tell me. She was very high strung. Lovely one moment and screaming at you the next. She wanted it all and she wanted it damn quick. Of course, being so beautiful, it seemed like she was going to get it. Not the way it's turned out, though, is it? Thanks, Mrs. Reynoldson. You've been very helpful. One of the other detectives will take your statement and then you can go home.
Doesn't look like anything. Any ideas? You want to go digging around in drains trying to support Mal's theory? You go ahead. I'm not getting my hands dirty. Stefan, Rusty, we'll take a look around outside and then follow up these leads. Can you get some guys to run down the jacket? You think Carruthers has called it right? He rarely gets it wrong. I don't know. I'm a Galloway. I've met enough girls in my time who can't handle their dope. Mal will be pleased. Well, that's hardly conclusive, given the number of those things we've come across recently. The autopsy will confirm it one way or another. I think our work is done here. Bukowski, Galloway, quite the little reunion in there. Almost brought a tear to my eye. They're good police. How would you know? You got promoted so fast you barely had time to learn their names. Let me fill you in. Bukowski's a pushover. Galloway's a drunk. You could learn a thing or two from both of them. Please. They couldn't work a vice case if their life depended on it. I don't see why they'd be any better or worse at it than me. I noticed you said better. Hubris disguised as humility. Kind of your trademark, don't you think? Why do you always twist everything? Galloway's got nothing to prove. He's been on homicide for years. And he's welcome to it. You're a terrier, Phelps, and that's what I need. Not some old bulldog who can't get up a flight of stairs without coughing up his lunch.
Here, Stoneman, Office 505. We locked up every doctor in this town. Vice would be able to work half days. Yes, sir. Your name? LAPD. We'd like to see Dr. Stoneman. Dr. Stoneman is with a patient. Would you like to wait? No, we wouldn't. Tell him we want to see him now. There's no need to be rude. Save it, sister. Dr. Stoneman, I have some gentlemen from the LAPD here to see you. Um, send them in, please. I'll, uh, I'll see this patient again after they've left. Your investigation is much more important than my sciatica. I'm just in pain here. Leave me alone. Dr. Stoneman, we are investigating the death of one of your patients, Julia Randall. I'm very sorry to hear that. Do you mind if we ask you some questions about Ms. Randall? Uh, um, not if it doesn't compromise doctor-patient privilege, detective. How well did you know Miss Randall? Barely at all. Um, she'd only been a patient six months or so. Julia Randall has been your patient for nearly a year. I'm sure you know that. Do you doubt my veracity, detective? Do you have access to my patient records? Your prescriptions contradict you, Doctor. Miss Randall was in the fashion business, as you probably know. She was jumped up on Benzedrine by day and knocked down by sleeping pills at night. I, I told her to slow up, but no. Life was too short for her. And you supplied the prescription for the Benzedrine. It's not illegal, detective. A lot of young women in her line of work use it for weight loss. You wrote Julia Randall a prescription for Benzedrine. How can you account for that? Miss Randall was in the uh, fashion business. She wanted to control her weight. Benzedrine is addictive, as I'm sure you know, doctor. As I warned her, but she was determined. She said she needed it to control her appetite. Sounds like you knew her pretty well. I knew the line of work she was involved in. That'll be all for now, Dr. Stoneman. We'll be in touch. said she was dead. That's a strange reaction to have to the death of a young patient.
Have you noticed how croakers only pull out the physician-patient privilege card when they got some to hide? There are certain things people have a right to keep private. Until it gets in the way of police work. And it's only private when it suits them. A couple of drinks and every doctor I've met will spill your darkest secrets in a heartbeat. Well, hello. What can I help you with today? LAPD, ma'am. I hope I haven't done anything wrong. No, ma'am. We're making some inquiries about Julia Randall. Does she work here? No, I had to let her go. Is she in some sort of trouble? She was found dead this morning. How long had Julia worked as a model? Well, she worked in New York before coming here. She was a very beautiful girl. Could you tell us why you let Miss Randall go? Husbands sometimes come in here with their wives. When Julia Randall modeled, the husbands were often more interested in her than they were their wives' dresses. The wives weren't happy and neither was I. Did she have any close friends here? Actually, yes. Heather Swanson. Would you like to speak with her? I'd like that very much. Please don't inform her about Miss Randall's death. Very well, officer. Heather, these gentlemen are from the LAPD. I'm Detective Phelps. This is Detective Earl. I understand that you worked with Julia Randall, Miss Swanson? Yes. Julia helped me get my job here. She's not in any kind of trouble, is She's she? She's a hellraiser, isn't she? It was a fast life. Oh, no. Maybe Mrs. Stanley would call her that, but I wouldn't. She's full of life, full of wonderful company. That's a lovely engagement ring. Do you like it? Henry gave it to I'm me. I'm very interested in engagement rings. Do you mind if I take a closer look? That's some pearl, Miss Swanson would have cost Henry a fortune. He must really love you. How did you meet Julia? I was introduced through my fiance, Henry Arnett. Henry is your beau. Tell us about it. Yes, he is. Henry has a fashion business. He and Julia have been friends for years. Are Miss Randall and Mr. Henderson engaged? Who's he? She was wearing a sapphire engagement ring. Someone must have given it to her. She never mentioned a man named Henderson to me. That's all for now, Miss Swanson. Could you ask your fiance to visit Hollywood Police Station? It would be very helpful to our inquiry. Now, wait a moment. I don't think I'll pass on that message until you tell me why you're asking all these questions. Julia Randall was found dead this morning. What? Oh, no. Oh, I can't believe it. She was so full of life. 